We're here with Eloise Horser at the ICA in London talking about her installation, Lives on Wire. Can you tell us about your work here at the ICA? It's partly to do with a cinema organ. Can you explain what that is and how you came across it? The cinema organ is an instrument that was used to accompany silent films in the 20s and 30s. Um, and actually, the first cinema organs were developed to kind of do away with the orchestra because originally you would have had a full orchestra accompanying a silent film and um, so they were sort of developed to basically economize um, and they were called the unit orchestra because what they did is that they uh, recreated the kind of all the divisions of the orchestra uh, through a single instrument and um, it's actually quite interesting because what they did is they didn't do away with the physical uh, instruments they simply remoted them and put them in uh, into a wall in the cinema they built uh, these chambers for the pipes like a church organ has a remote rank of pipes so the cinema organ also has like a remote rank of pipes that would have been um, just behind the cinema screen there would have been the chamber with the pipes in addition to the pipes they also often had a percussion division so you'd actually have like live cymbals and you'd have bells and so what you have what they managed to do is essentially create this spectrum of sounds but create it from a single keyboard which was um, electronically and pneumatically uh, connected up through the body of or through the architecture of the cinema to these remote instruments so this was quite a complicated piece of kind of engineering and um, it was something that was done by um, Robert Hope Jones who was actually a um, telephone engineer and he used principles quite similar to sort of electromechanical relay signals to develop this sort of machine where the, um, the, the organist could issue a signal and the, the pipe that would be remote would play the notes. This particular mechanism is not a cinema organ, it's actually um, it's actually the lighting console um, that was inside uh, a cinema organ in Stockport. It was in the Stockport Regal. Once they did away with the orchestra and they built this single keyboard to kind of replace it, they also um, often made this kind of decorative art deco surround. It's like a, I, I, it's a kind of illuminated carapace that sat around the keyboard, and um, and these were um, these were really really beautiful and really stylized and they were produced by two or three British companies and for about 10 or 20 years they were kind of really in vogue and there was even kind of competitions about the style of them and they were glass um, and and they cycled through different colors they look a bit like jukeboxes um, and this machine would have been regulating the lights in that illuminated surround so it was it was part of a lighting mechanism in a cinema organ. Can you explain how this um, colour changing mechanism works? Basically what you have um, are three different channels, red, blue and green, and then you have these, these arms, these wiper, they're called wiper arms, which are connected to these cams. Um, and, uh, and originally this whole assembly would have been um, wired up to a set of filament light bulbs uh, with gels. So there would have been a direct electrical equation that the current would have gone through this into this contraption, which is what's known as a variable resistor. So that uh, here, from here to here, you have this, these coils at the top have a, a very tightly bound and so therefore offer a lot of resistance and these are the least bound and offer not much resistance. So for example, the placement of these arms um, allows the equivalent amount of current through the mechanism and into the filament light bulb and therefore basically mixes the colour. If you look underneath the machine, you can see the, the motion where the brushes make contact is actually a very, very sort of, it, it reminds me of a kind of stroke, it really, strokes the underside um, and that's I think because if it didn't do that so smoothly there would be a lot of noise in the um, in the electrical equation. I mean this machine is all about contact and resistance. And that sweeping motion is what's fed into the the film or the, the work on the wall there? 
Um, yeah, that, that work there is shot from underneath the resistor and it shows, you can see now, the wiper arm coming across. So originally there were filament light bulbs attached to this? That's correct, yes. How is it working in here now without any filament light bulbs attached? So in this room, um, what we've got uh, in the ceiling here uh, is something called an analog to DMX interface. And it takes uh, a signal from this machine, an analog signal, and it's, uh, it traces it and puts it back into DMX. And so these are actually LED lights, but they are controlled through this sort of very dense <laughs> apparatus. Um, and the light yeah. in here is changing kind of very slowly as we stand here. That's um, in relation to, to the speed of the motor and the speed of the cans. So if you wanted it to go faster or if you wanted it to be more intense, you could change the arc of the cans or you could change the speed of the motor. So it's all sort of in relation to one another. I think it has almost a kind of anthropomorphic feeling in its reach and in it, the arm. and. Mm -hmm. This film here is, uh, is I, I think I might have explained before that, that what you have with um, the cinema organ is this very complex instrument that was often built into the cinemas in which they were installed. And this is a perfect example. It's the Burberry flagship store on Regent Street, but before um, being the Burberry store, it was actually uh, the new art gallery. And before that, it was a cinema. And it has... Um, a Wurlitzer from 1926, from its original installation in the store, um, which they can't move because it's listed with with the store. This here is the um, the old uh, the old stage uh, where the organ would have been. Um, one thing that's very distinct about uh, cinema organs is that they came up and down from the pit of the orchestra and that again reflects the fact that when they did away with the orchestra they basically created an instrument for spectacle that would rise hydraulically up and down. In the 30s uh, the cinema organ also became a kind of fixture of going to the cinema so you'd have in the interval of the cinema the organist would play and he would rise up from the, uh, from the orchestra pit and this, these are 16 pute telecom cables, so they're very high density cables. And um, in fact, it, it's these cables that are sort of deep in the ground. To certain people, these cables are kind of frightening because these are the cables that are often stolen and traded illegally and because of the high amount of copper in them. But these are also fast on their way to, um, to obsolescence because of fiber optics. So, um, in fact, the, the yellow and white ones are already uh, out of use. These are, they're already legacy cables. And the title of the show, is it Lives on Wire or Lives on Wire? Uh, the title of the show is both. Um, it's, a, it's a pun on, um, it's taken from a documentary that was filmed at the uh, Compton Organ Factory. And uh, there's a really beautiful, uh, uh, the, the documentary is shot in the style of a silent film um, and it has this, these kind of text parts in it. Anyway, it has an intertitle and that, uh, uh, that shows, it says this is a view of the uh, cabling section and, uh, which lives on wire and then it says it digests it with consummate ease. So obviously that's where the title comes from but there's a pun on sort of lives and lives there and machines and humans.